Hi, uh, my name is Paul Marco, and I'm especially, well, we're all especially privileged because we have a man that's really doing something, he's capable, and he's really doing something to help the targeted community that I call the selected community. This man is a medical doctor, and he's also working closely with uh, PTSD patients and targeted individuals, and he's got a lot of knowledge about what they're going through and a lot of techniques that will probably uh, help them. He is going to be helping us with the uh, Pinecone Utopia portal, which is an open source investigation on how TIs can manage to get through the suffering and what we can do to pull out of it, perhaps. But I want to introduce you to a guy that I've been so impressed with. Um, since he's he really written us some uh, emails, and I've got to talk to him for a little while just now, uh, uh, Dr. Robin Kelly. Uh, Dr. Kelly, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, and then uh, we can start talking? Well, thank you. Thank you, Paul, um, about myself. <clears throat> well, I mean, first of all, I'm a family man and a granddad and a... Um, uh, I enjoy I enjoy life and I hopefully respect all life and people. Uh, I put that number one before I'm saying I'm a doctor because I if you go into what I've done in my life I, I uh, I'm a qualified medical doctor qualified in 1974 in in London uh, spent six years in hospital practice and uh, came out here to New Zealand. Uh, uh, where, where I went into family practice in the 80s, uh, I became very interested in acupuncture and Eastern philosophy in general. Um, and particularly, uh, I integrated that into my practice. And over the last, uh, I've been in practice now for, well, 36 years or so. Um, and that's become more and more of my practice to the point that we now work at home. I work at home with my, my wife um, <clears throat> and we uh, run a pretty well, which is quite a unique practice where we spend at least half an hour with each person. But usually an hour, uh, we're looking for meaning in chronic illness. We're looking for um, how we can infuse each uh, healing <laughs> uh uh, act with the with the um, soul of the of the person coming to see us. So basically, we are trying to custom build our heal the, the healing plan uh, uh, for for each an individual. Um, I do do my regular practice as well um, to keep my doctor ticket. I have to do quite a lot of ongoing exams and. Uh, and I work at uh, also a student health uh, uh, counselling uh, service, medical and counselling service uh, at the university here, which introduces me to so many people from around the world and actually has been an education for me. Um, so uh, over the last 20 years, I, I, I've written a few books. The first one was uh, and how I integrate uh, Chinese philosophy in with Western medicine. I don't see these as uh, dualities, two dualities. Mm -hmm. I see these as a, ideally an integrated process. Then I wrote the next one called The Human Antenna, which basically um, sees our, our, the growth of our consciousness uh, in parallel with some of the challenges we have in life, not just health challenges, but also, um, but also situational challenges. Um, and that we are uh, both receivers uh, and, and, and emitters of consciousness, that consciousness uh, passes through us um, and manifests itself when we are being our most creative and our most joyful and, and mindful. And then the last book I wrote was called The Human Hologram uh, because it actually goes away from the fact that we are this entity of which is receiving and transmitting, but we are actually holographically and part of this universe, and that it's not just them, it and us. <laughs> we right. are, we are it. <laughs> we are our own universe. And when um, uh, I wrote the last book, and I, I finished that, that's when that my life decided <laughs> to take another turn. <laughs> and basically, through uh, a complex, a series of traumatic events over the last seven years, 
uh, I've been um, uh, clobbered and financially got at to an extreme extent by a construction company here. Uh, we lost a court case. We've now found that the judge and the main defendant are business partners. Um, and we, we, and during this time, I've become particularly interested in, um, I, f I felt fairly targeted. Uh -huh. I, I, I felt uh, an empathy with so many people and, and as what happens organically in this situation, people who are in similar situations tend to be attracted to, 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 to us. And one of the ways I've found to personally heal from this is to use any experience I've had to try and help others. But also, it's a two-way process. I, I learn more and more about this. And so I, when I came across uh, Pine Utopia and some of the wonderful work the group is doing there, um, I found so many parallels, this extreme example, particularly of those targeted individuals through electromagnetic sort of ways. I found that this was uh, an extreme example of, of, of the people that I'm trying to help as well, because in fact, and I, I, I broadened this into all those people who are out there suffering from narcissistic abuse, which I would say is 99.9% .9 of our population. <laughs> In one way or another. Yes. Um, so I'm only too happy to add anything I can uh, to this uh, whole field because the solution is going to be a lot of smart people and, um, and empathetic people getting together and creating a, not only a database but a community uh, which actually means that we're going to escape the actions, the very, the very uh, a devious actions of, of these, this group uh, or end, a group of entities or whatever, whatever they are out there. Right. Uh, yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> if you send us a list of those books, we'll put them below the video. Oh, thank you. So we'll just remember to do that. I mean, the other, the other book that, I, uh, that, that has been a godsend to me is, and you'll probably know this, is Paul Levy's Dispelling Whitico, and I can't speak highly enough about this. Um, and, uh, you know, I can talk later about that as well, because this, this, this provides a deep understanding of what, what many people are going through. There you go. I, I'll talk about that later. That's great. Mm. Okay, well, uh, we were very impressed with your, first of all, your interest in target individuals, because... Uh, you know, there are doctors that will stay clear of them. There's doctors that will work with them. And you're uh, diving into it, first of all. And second of all, diving into it uh, with knowledge of uh, consciousness, uh, some of these Eastern techniques that might work, and, uh, and some other things. So you seem like the perfect person to start us off uh, thinking, uh, thinking about how we should be thinking if we're a targeted individual, how should we be thinking about what's happening to us? And uh, like, how, how do you, uh, you probably counsel people, I know I do, uh, mm. uh, that are in these situations all the time. Uh, give us a little uh, idea of, of your whole um, perspective on this. How do you start uh, working with people on this? Is that a good question? Or? Well, I Okay. No, it's a very good question, and 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 I I think hard about it. I I, I think that it is clear that um, most of us carry a huge amounts of shame, and that the first thing I can do to help somebody else is to be alongside them, and to understand the shame that they carry. And I've I've come to this conclusion from understanding the amount of shame that we all carry, and I carry as well. Um, and so the first thing we should do if we're helping others is, is to listen to them and be alongside them. And in fact, as Gandhi said, you, you, you meet them with your being. <laughs> okay. You do not, not with your judgment, with your being. Um, and you listen intensely. Now, what I've learned about this personally is how we and the word gaslighting comes to mind, how we've all been gaslighted, because infused in any abuse is uh, a sense of that it is the person deserves this, or it's the person's fault. 
um, and they had it coming to them. Um, and this seems to be completely common with, with all narcissistic abuse, um, from uh, sexual abuse of children uh, right through to, to what the um, TIs are, are, are um, experiencing. Um, so what that any other person needs is a person alongside them who understands that. Um, but you go a little bit beyond just being their advocate because it's so easy when somebody comes in to say these things, hey, look, you know, you weren't to blame or whatever. It doesn't seem to penetrate until you you just with them for, for, for some time. Um, <clears throat> the understanding what happens to the body in post-traumatic stress is important because uh, we have learned a lot from those who are suffering from post-traumatic stress from uh, either abuse like sexual abuse or actually being in a war zone. Uh, what, what happens to certain parts in the brain and we talk about the amygdala, the limbic system and how that becomes hyperactive, the amygdala, and then eventually after time, it, like anything hyperactive, it can burn out and shrink down. Um, and, and, and so what happens in complex post-traumatic stress, which we're learning much more about, is, 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 is slightly different from that because the, the insults are coming uh, all the time at the person, as of the triggers are coming all the time. Um, and is actually the condition of the day because um, those who are not aware of this uh, won't be aware that every time they talk, they, 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 they look at the news, for instance, or the mainstream news, there's a fur further uh, input into the system which will either desensitize them or trigger them. But more often it will desensitize them and, and try to hypnotize them and send them to sleep. But we do know that that is the dangerous situation because once you repress this and put it into the body, that's when the body can react with illness. And you can lead to not only the, the physical illness, not only obviously the anxiety, uh, but it will go bury into, into the body and produce blood pressure and strokes and even cancer. And that's really been my interest in this because I believe that um, what is happening, there actually is, is, is is uh, dangerous to the body, even homicidal. Um, and that is coming from this constant bombardment uh, of people. Right. And it would seem to be the, the selected community, as you say, and I like that, get it. <laughs> They're the ones that actually, um, whatever the forces are out there that are trying to get them, realize the, these other techniques aren't going to work on them, that, that right. they are, um, supercharged. They're the sub superheroes. And so we're going to zap them. <laughs> we're going to zap exactly. them uh, early. Uh, and we're going to, I, <clears throat> about 10 years ago, um, a, a, road, uh, a, a road scholar, um, I, I don't know if you know what the term road scholar, that's from, yeah. from overseas people go to Oxford, um, are selected. So the best, uh, the best academic minds are selected to go to Oxford. Well, I saw one of these young young women um, come to me, and this is the story. She was a uh, ecological scientist. She was an environmental scientist uh, of the top top order, probably New Zealand's sort of premier export when it comes to intellect. And she went to Oxford, and after her first term, she had a trip to went on a trip to Paris, uh, and she was just walking down the street, and she collapsed like this um, and had a fit and she was taken to uh, a hospital over there and the neurologist couldn't find any reason why this has happened uh, but from that moment on she became like a vegetable she was just went from woe to go to so and they came to me in distress they brought her back um, and uh, she was she was writhing um, uh, found it difficult to communicate um, She'd been to three or four neurologists by that time. And I remember thinking at the time, and I knew a bit about electromagnetic, electromagnetic weaponry. I thought, the time, this is strange. This sounds like she's been zapped. <laughs> I felt that. And she went to her other, to her, and that was it. And then I thought, well, this, this person uh, would well have changed our concepts of 
humanity, <laughs> like so many others. Um, and I'd have to say, when I, when I learned of Catherine's story, I, I felt there was a similar link going on there. Luckily, Catherine has got you know her full. Well, she's wonderful. You know, she's her well, she's Oxford. She's Oxford also. She's not a Rhodes Scholar. She's not a Rhodes Scholar. No, I know she isn't. But she's but you know she she's one that would gets it. She's one that gets it. Uh, I I'd like to think I'm a systems thinker as well. And that's hence the understanding of the holographic fractal universe or whatever. And that's that ultimately the systems thinkers. So I think the system thinkers who can see patterns in the world and connect those patterns, large and small, um, are the ones that are probably um, yeah, at risk and a threat to the linear thinkers who who, uh, right. who, who are still dominant in our science and our, on our, in our lives. Um, Robin, you mentioned... So anyway, that, that story brought it through to me and that reawoken... That, your, that uh, I had uh, a reawakening of that un understanding with, with your work recently. Well, thanks. You mentioned that you work with post-traumatic stress. Are they similar to the TIs? I know the TIs are irritated all the time. <laughs> they're they're yeah. constantly... Uh, bombarded with some type of, uh, of uh, weaponry, gang stalking, some kind of uh, something to, to set them off all the time. Yes, there's a, um, I I'd right, recommend the listeners to, to a, a website called Out of the Fog. Uh, Out of the Fog, and you just, if you Google that and then CPTSD, which is uh, complex post-traumatic stress. You'll see, and I've got it here, I've just printed it out, what it feels like, complex post-traumatic stress. Um, and I, this is a, uh, almost like a checklist that I go through with people coming to see me. Um, and the difference between, is, yeah, there's this hypervigilance, anxiety, all the things that they'll be experiencing as well. Um, but in a jumbled way uh, and a chaotic way, because that's how their lives have been attacked. Uh, and so I, I recommend people to go through this and look at this and not, and not despair with it, but to actually then to realize that this is totally recognized uh, as a set of symptomatology, which, which can be helped. Um, and, you know, the interesting thing is, is, and I've noticed this as well, is that we all become hypervigilant and we can be accused of being obsessional and all these, uh, and psychotic and all these things which um, our psychiatrists could label us. And that is part of the, the illness. That is actually probably what the TIs are being subjected to so that they uh, are then accused of being a bit crazy, they were crazy, you know, you, and that because they become hyper vigilant um, and they become hyper aware, um, but that seems to be part of that as well. But that is the, the also the effect. I, I think we are in general the people who are attacked are um, perfectionists often, and and uh, uh, you know it's all right to have your obsessions if your obsessions are. Um, for the good of humanity. In fact, you know, the wouldn't, we wouldn't be here without right. the obsessions. But I know how people can be uh, belittled um, and uh, because of these symptoms. They can be further compound uh, or isolation. Uh, and the isolation uh, uh, stops our healing. So, uh, yeah, it be all becomes a vicious circle. Yes. Yeah, they become hyper vigilant, and and I think that's really an advantage in a way. Uh, the people that uh, I know, the investigation team, I've watched them uh, spelunking down the rabbit hole in an amazingly mm. quick way. Mm. Uh, from six months ago when we started this, now the sophistication level about the uh, why they're targeted, what they're targeted by how to fight it, and uh, their minds seem to be more and more open as we go through. And so if there's any good to this, um, it, was, it would be because it makes them hypervigilant, 
And although, yes. you know, in the long run, that does wear you down, and it can cause illnesses. But, uh, but you know, if you're in a loving relationship, and or and if, then that helps because I know my wife when I get on a bit of a tangent she says oh come on Robin go for a walk and uh, let's you know she she's she counterbalances this mm -hmm. you may well recognise this uh, there uh, not everybody is that lucky to have loving relationships in this way who say enough already you know just right. just do that uh, and that's where we come in as well because we realise that's part of the healing as well that somehow we have to be um, helped with this. But it's not a question. So many people will say, let it go. This is a awful thing. <laughs> you know, when you're in this, they'll say, let it go. Um, right. It's in your past. OK, well, that's not part of me. That's and, and, and they'll say, let it go or compartmentalize this or whatever. I say no. No, what we do is integrate this into our being so that we can help people. This is not. Um, to be separated in that dualistic fashion. This is to be integrated with support. Um, and it, when that happens, you know, if we talk holographically, if we are a holographic unit in a greater, in a, in a greater whole, then when we start doing that, it becomes integrated into our society. We need to integrate it. The vast majority of people have separated it. They've become cognitive, cognitively dissonant to it. And then there's the other part, the 10% who actually know it's going on and are willfully blind at explaining it, okay? Um, but it's the dissonance that we're really up against. So ultimately, you know, let's integrate this and become a mouthpiece. Let's not separate it. As far as getting over it is concerned, a lot of people mean by getting over it, forget it. But it doesn't, the body doesn't forget it. The no. body, that's what happens in trauma, the body remembers it. That's why it, we, we are triggered. So, so sure, we can get over being a victim. That's what I will say. Okay, yes, I'll let go of being a victim, but I'm not going to let go of my life experiences because that is me. That's part of me. That's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why everybody else is here. I think that uh, cognitive dissonance, I hope people understand what that is. It's when you hold two conflicting um, scenarios in your brain. Uh, this is what you've grown up with and now this is what you're seeing. And if you hold them, cognitive dissonance I think is a mental illness uh, because you're, you just really are holding things that are incompatible in your brain. The, the way to get around it is to see them together. You've got to meld them together. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll find that your brain produces a more complex understanding of what you're going through because it's not holding things separately, it's putting them together. Now, together, how does this look? And it'll give you a little bit more complex. It's not easy. And I'm sure Dr. Robin has walked people through cognitive dissonance a lot to try to get them to I, I think the, um, I mean, you've mentioned, I think, in your left and right brain, that, 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 that uh, um, philosophy, of course, you know, there's more, more to it than that. More to but it. if you're looking at, at chakras, and for instance, you know, the, the crown chakra dependence on this balance up here, which has then gone through the heart. So you've gone through the heart, so you've risen, your energy is written through your heart, so you're speaking through your heart, through your voice. And then there's this total um, integrated balance, which connects you to, to that unity consciousness. Um, and and what's happened over at least 7,000 years is it's the left, frontal part of the left brain has been so much in dominance. Um, and has certainly has been, there's been a compartmentalization of this. Therefore, everything at university is being um, argued at the moment by this reasonable left brain. Right. Incidentally, I'm seeing many PhD students who are women Whose, whose physiology goes completely crazy when they do a PhD. You know, you, you know what a PhD is, it totally overtakes your life. Um, but for a woman, it totally, it, it really screws with them, particularly if they're doing a PhD in anything holistic at all. You know, they get, they get really sick. Um, and so I use these techniques to help balance them as well. So we, we are coming to this with our being, with the heart, <clears throat> with the heart, uh, the voice, <laughs> And, and, and the brain all in harmony, all in that sort of uh, coherence, um, left and right. And that is the way 
the, uh, there's no answer to this because most of the attacks are coming from uh, a very male, let's say, uh, male paradigm, left brain cause and effect um, mm -hmm. attack. Uh, we come from very much a being, um, an integrated being uh, community. Uh, right. And that's to help people into that mode. I think it's our natural mode and it's the natural mode that we should be evolving into. But this is this is how I help. So, so if somebody is uh, inter interested in dance or they were dancing 30 years ago and they say, oh, I don't have time for it now, you go back into your dance, you go back into your music, you go back into your um, that state of timeless being where you are um, feeling you're contributing. Well, you, you don't, you're just, you, you just are into that state of being. Um, so you become more and more integrated. You know, even, I don't know, I did a, I did a course in whirling dervishing <laughs> at one stage, where yes. you just, which is a very gentle way of just turning and turning and turning. There's, cer there's certain things one can do that are very simple. And in fact, they're always very funny when you try and do this and, and, um, uh, and laugh. That's when you're getting back into this much more integrated state uh, that our children have. This, you know, they just smile. They're naturally smiling and happy. They have no. There is no answer to those perpetrators of this this darkness. They don't have an answer to that. Um, and the, and uh, the, that's so. There's a sort of that's one of the ways I I guide people into into that that, that joyful, gentle, creative state. Great. It'll be great to have your input from now on mm. and on the portal. Mm. I, have, I have a question, and this is kind of related. You'd mentioned the chakra system. Now, mm. it seems to me that the uh, uh, whoever's perpetrating, I, I don't know how to characterize them anymore. They, they consider themselves uh, elites or Olympians or whatever they consider themselves. Mm. Uh, mm. They seem to want to hold people in the lower chakras. That's why, mm. well, they're sex cults. They're, they're just mm. sex cults. Mm. Mm. And so it's all about sex and um, sodomy and those kind of things to keep them mm. from going up into the upper chakras. And it seems to me that some of these things that we're advocating that might help are to get out of your lower chakra and more into your heart chakra. I know yep. there's, a, yep. there's a woman that we've been trying to get on for a while, she said, "Just, just love your perpetrators." And I, when I first heard mm. this, I thought, "Well, how am I going to tell these people who are hit 24 hours a day by energy weapons to love their perpetrators?" Uh, but for her, it works. Now they've really—they're slamming her. We're trying to get her on to talk a little bit, but of mm. course, they—they're really not, not wanting her to go there. But I just wanted to mention mm. about that. I think the chakra system's relevant. In this mm. case, and I think a lot of these things kind of put you into a higher state. I know that uh, my wife Mindy was talking to Ramola uh, the other mm. day, and they were talking about nature mm. and just going into nature and uh, mm. yeah, getting into that kind of yes, thing. absolutely, just being in nature. Um, that's why we're lucky here. I mean, and I think I'm sure you're lucky there as 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 how to go in into nature as well. Yes, from the chakra system. Um, the, the battle is below the third chakra. Um, the, the third chakra is personal power. Um, on one side of the of the, of the chakra, below the ribs, if you like, uh, you you have those who are the victims on one side, uh, and therefore probably give their power to a god to which they are. Uh, obliged to follow their orders, for instance. So there's one side, but the other side are the control freaks, the the uh, extreme narcissistic personalities. Now, we meet in the middle where we compromise, where we discover our own power that's in balance. Um, some could say that healthy narcissism, <laughs> if that's not an oxymoron at all. Right. But actually, when we when we find that this this wonderful balance. Uh, incidentally, the stomach area is where people get stomach ulcers and, and reflux. That's when they're controlled from if they're in work where they've got the boss controlling them and then they've got the clients controlling them, they're going to be stuck. Right. Yeah, okay, that's where the majority of people are. 
um, and you hear them, they burp a lot. So um, as as they as that uh, uh, balances, that third chakra balances, that's when that's when the personal power battle uh, dissolves, and you go into the heart, which is the green, which is basically when you are you see life not in competition, but in a, at a win-win cooperative venture. Um, uh, in with nature. So that's where the green movement is moving into there. Now, once you know, the energy gets into the heart um, and that, and you're allowed to live in your heart, in other words, live in your, which is your basic energetic being. The heart is many my times more electrical than the brain. Uh, and then it rises so that you have your voice, so you can express what your heart says. Then relatively quickly it can come up and, and, and harmonize the brain. So you've got this harmony between heart and voice and brain. Um, you see many people who with sinus problems and blocks here, um, and they're the ones that it's just the waiting for the, the, their spirituality that, to grow, their personal spirituality to grow away from their conditioned spirituality, um, for instance. Uh, so, so one of the, the medicine that I, I love is to identify where these blockages are, because they're so simple to relate back to the person. In Chinese medicine, where we've got the meridians and we've got a lot of complex conditions, it's not as easy to relate this to back to the person. You know, it's fascinating, and I use acupuncture all the time, and will try and relate this back. But most people will know that if they're sad, they're going to feel heavy in the in the, in, in the lead chest, in the in the in the uh, chakra, the, the heart chakra. They're going to feel um, so. So this this type of um, understanding of our human condition, I have found over the last twenty years incredibly helpful because the person gets it and it opens up a deeper understanding of what is happening and what we're doing is allowing them to for the hearts to open to them that's the compassion that they need for themselves and then the voices to open and then then you've got this this harmony and i think i believe the perpetrators if they realize this and i'm not sure if they do they do realize this is totally out of um, their control um, if enough people do it um, uh, they don't because they are taught they are still locked into the lower chakras, where personal power and vendettas and and attacks are important. Um, mm. And Money. I think so. as far as loving them, it's a difficult one. I, I'm 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 a bit conflicted in this loving thing, having come into contact recently with so many psychopath. Well with psychopaths and, mm -hmm. and know that they can use this. We have to be really quite careful. I think deep down we can love humanity so much that we do not want this small percentage to control so many others who are asleep. Uh, and I think that's where our, possibly our love and compassion should go. Um, uh, and we've got to have to be yeah, careful because if they will draw you in right. to uh, a state uh, where you are open-hearted to a point that they can attack. So um, I, I, I'm still working through that, although I do admire the Buddhist monks who have been incarcerated um, <clears throat> around the world who learn to love those who are incarcerating them and torturing them. I, I, I really admire that, but I also, I, I, I'm a bit conflicted about how we go about that at the moment. That's just me. No, I'm glad to hear that. We were talking this morning about uh, the, the difference between perpetrators and targets. And uh, we came to the conclusion that most perpetrators are probably targets. I know if you, if you go into the satanic practices of ritual child abuse, you know, a lot of these people came up. And, and where, where exactly do you start to blame? Do you start at two generations back? Do you blame this person? Uh, but we're, we're really uh, hung up on uh, people being able to uh, free themselves so much from their past that they can exercise free will no matter where they come from. And I, I'm not exactly sure whether that's practical, but I'd, I'm really glad you took us through your understanding of that too. As we, get, as we go down the road on this and we uh, throw things out and we uh, 
look um, at, at how we're trying to help, how people are trying to work through this. It's interesting, again, to form community, to, to keep this uh, open source investigation going so we can, we can find out just, just exactly what this means and uh, how this might work. Now, when you're working with the chakra system, I, I don't want to emphasize this too much, but this is, um, I certainly see um, the controllers or the powers that shouldn't be trying to lock people down in the lower chakras. That seems to be to be really obvious by all the practices that they do. I mean, including child molestation, cannibalism, and everything. And you work, I can see where uh, acupuncture could really work because it's freeing the mm. prana or the chi to flow up. Now, mm. your, your fear is going to lock them back down again, I think. Are, are there things mm. that you have them do, I hate to say cognitively, because I think a lot of times you're, you're dealing with the heart. Mm. Um, are, there, are there ways that you talk through, uh, like talk therapy, get them to uh, work with this system? Yeah, um, and it <clears throat> depends on the individual. I, th I think you're right. Just to before I go into that, when you when you treat someone with acupuncture, you're you're helping them get into this different state, the state of being. Um, most of the time, when you if you do very gentle acupuncture for just systemically, the person will escape the fight and flight mode. In other words, which is our stress mode, which right. drains our adrenals and the rest. And they'll go into a state of being of acceptance. Um, and for many people, they need help with that. Okay, you can say to the person, okay, let's do a little meditation, let's breathe to the tummy, and they may not be ready for that. So I use acupuncture technique, um, not only to focus on you know what's going on in their body, because they have physical illness as well as a result of this but to get them into that mode where they are appreciating the state of being. Um, and the other thing that, that, that it involves, of course, is touch. And one of the things um, that has been so misused both in men and women in their lives is touch. It's amazing how many men haven't been um, touched in a, in a healing, non-aggressive, non-sexual way. Right. And the same with women. So, so you know, I always think just this whole uh, state, this ritual that we're going through, uh, even before we analyze its individual parts, has real meaning for people. Even somebody lying down for 10 minutes during, or 20 minutes in the day um, without guilt is important. Uh -huh. It is. Huh? And, and they, they, you know, they're, they're, their addiction has been their busyness, for instance. Their escape has been their busyness as well. So, so, to, so um, the acupuncture uh, creates the state of being in which we will then say, well, how can you do this yourself um, uh, through simple methods? One of the things I go through, this is the therapies I use, uh, would be an adaptation of... of um, what they call emotional freedom techniques and tapping, because what happens when you tap is that <clears throat> you are focusing back on the body um, and you're actually tapping yourself with intent over acupuncture areas, but you're not being invasive. And there are two elements to tapping. First of all, you're um, uh, really just saying back to the body what the body is telling you without judgment at all. You're not, this isn't an affirmation like every day I'm getting better and, you know, I, I, lo I love my psychopath necessarily. Right. It might say I hate my psychopath. Yeah. But is that, so even though I'm really feeling this, this pain or I'm feeling this emptiness or I'm, and I'm, I'm targeted or whatever, there's two parts of it. That's the first part. And I actually write that, you know, in, w w within an infinity sign. That first part I go, even though I feel this. Uh, and it's just being honest back to the body, just saying, hey, I hear you, I, I hear you, what's going on inside? And then you say, I really, I have compassion for myself. So the second part, so, so the two parts of healing is an acknowledgement of who you are without judgment, an acceptance, which doesn't mean wearing, a, waving a white flag, and then a state of compassion to yourself. Now, that is really difficult for people. And, and our role as, as, as any human being, uh, not just a healer, is to incite, in, in, induce a sense of compassion in that person for themselves as much as we have for them. 
and that can take time and that is that is the, the, the block that we go through. So the, so I will, so as far as talk therapy is concerned, um, we will not try to use our, our, our mental faculties to solve this. We tend to use the, our basic being to settle this and our compassion to settle this as well. You know, what, so many people live in their brain. So if say I have a lawyer who, who's being um, an, under attack, <laughs> or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, or having stress. The last thing I want to do is get them into their argumentative brain. Exactly. I want to get them away from that. And you know, for so many people, it's just to say that this is where the breath is so important. Just, just bring the breath down and instead of just allow your tummy to expand and just focus on that breath going down there. And then there's a Qigong breath where you, as you, you breathe in twice and then as you breathe out, so uh, um, <clears throat> you breathe in and you breathe out. But the breath involves sending the breath, not just to the tummy, but to the heart, as if there's a highway down there and you know, there's a highway to the heart. So, so the focus for the people is away from their head, which is where I believe the perpetrators, whatever we call them, uh, are so much in their heads uh, and their heads are so much in control that if you can bring it down to your being, you have the answer uh, to the issue. And it's something that they cannot counteract because there's a purity of spirit in what we're doing. That's, that's uh, why when I, I think I was wrong with the right and left brain, but I do think that uh, if you think of it as a metaphor, I mean, certainly there is a things, metaphor uh, yeah. that they have trained us to be in our left mm. brain. We're very analytical. That's why uh, to see this thing as a gestalt, uh, uh, to see the macro of what's going on is very difficult because we, uh, we're only taught to analyze. I'm going to go through that and, and see if I can shed some light on that in, in broadcast we do on Sunday. But I wanted to ask you, uh, you, you focused on guilt, and I think guilt is a real important thing to focus on. Uh, guilt is supposedly one of the lowest resonance frequencies. So they've got to be loving it when you're in guilt. But when I'm talking to somebody about guilt, I always remind them that guilt is self-hatred. And there's really no reason to hate yourself. I mean, you're what you are, you know. And so I, I try to diffuse the guilt when I'm talking. Uh, by by reminding them that it's a you've got to appreciate yourself and love yourself, which is what you're trying to do. Get them into the mm. heart chakra. Also, I I've been I've been finding out that your your heart is actually um, a source of great intelligence. Mm -hmm. and it's 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 certainly not just a pump. It's uh, it has a lot more uh, to do than just that. Or all these all these exercises are heart focused, um, and, and the great resource is of course the, the Heart Math Heart Math uh, mm -hmm. uh, initiatives, who, who basically were saying that we need this perfect harmony between heart and head, and that's what I've said. Um, uh, but you'll find that all this focus is back into this heart area, which again is beyond this is this is a love that's beyond true rationality in this way it doesn't mean that you become irrational at all because we add our, our brain but basically if you follow your heart you then apply your brain how you're going to do that <laughs> uh, right. so so the heart and head work in harmony um very very important and, and not um, yeah, uh, it's the focus of yoga, of course, as well. And it, it's uh, it, it's a true yogi um, will follow one's heart, but when threatened, of course, will act. Um, I often say, look at the cat, look at the cat, because the cat's sitting there purring, uh, meditating a lot of the time, but the mouse comes, it gets it, okay? So that's how we, that's where, how we should be in this state of a constant awareness. Uh, but well, it was with surprise attacks whenever, whenever we need to. Exactly. You know, the, cat, the cats teach us a lot. Of course, the dogs do as well, but the cats teach us a lot. 
That's why we. Uh, that's why when we were thinking of a name for the open source investigation, we wanted to mm. call it a portal, because I think mm. the answer isn't to be in uh, in meditation and uh, some kind of a heartfelt thing. It's, a, it's the ability to mm. go back and forth from your mm. your rational brain. And uh, I remember coaching a a, a high powered lawyer and. Uh, I had done some uh, psychological testing on him, and he was heart-based. He was an intuitive, mm. and I said, "Boy, you know, you're a high-powered corporate lawyer." I said, "How, how do you, how do you do that? Being a very intuitive mm. kind of a sensitive mm. guy." He says, "Well, my heart tells me where to go." Mm. You know, he had to, he had to investigate. You have to do a lot of, uh, you know, investigation when you're doing this. What are the precedents and things? He says, "My heart tells me where to look." And I mm. use my mm. rational brain when I get there. So that might mm. be an example of going back and forth in the portal. Uh, yes, so that, that is. It's where your, your heart interests and tastes. And then your, your mind has to uh, be engaged uh, rationally how you're going to um, create this life that, right. that your heart is, is in a, your heart's in it. And you see that the number of people who are, uh, whose life uh, is and, and personality and soul are all integrated are living uh, are living a dream and it may not be a materialistic dream um, but ultimately there is an element of that that needs to be infused in I suppose all of us um, yeah follow one's heart but, but use one's head you know right yeah. you've got to really have that I noticed there's a big uh, push on the part of the controlling faction to use uh, techno music, and they're doing these things called the uh, Tomorrowland festivals, where yes. it's very Dionysian, if you know what I mean. Very, very yes. uh, uh, debauchery kind of uh, focused to get you out of your mind. Well, the yes. idea is you have your heart and your mind, and using them together is 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 the escape, not. Uh, Doing I think that, there, I mean, you can see that's good getting into a trance state, but also you know you're vulnerable in that trance state as well. So, you know, one has to be a little bit cautious about what's going on there, um, uh, how it's used, the intent it's used there. Oh, here I've got uh, <clears throat> the brain of the human hologram. I'll read this from Frank Baum from The Wizard of Oz. All the same, said the scarecrow, I shall ask for brains instead of a heart. For a fool would know, would not know what to do with a heart if he had one. I shall take the heart, the tide returned the tin woodman, but brains do not make one happy, and happiness is the best thing in the world. Okay. That's so beautiful. that's that's from the Wizard of Oz. Okay. That's beautiful. They're, they're really sending us a lot of information. We, have to, we have to listen to it. So it's it's really interesting to know someone that's really not just pushing uh, pushing the TIs away, but actually appreciating what they're going through and helping them deal with it in the moment. Uh, uh, the Techno Crime Fighter Forum is going uh, toward uh, gathering evidence and going against them uh, on a, a judicial basis and, and human. I, I know that Ramol is really pushing to get the information on what targets are going through out there. Um, but uh, I think this side of it also has to be going to try to get us through the suffering. Uh, when you're teaching someone to do uh, yoga or breathing techniques, you mentioned that uh, there can be a little bit of a danger to it. Are, are there, is there something that you tell them to, to go into or surround themselves with? I know I've, we've done that in certain uh, Eastern techniques surround yourself with mm. kind of a uh, a barrier, a protective barrier. Yeah, I, I I've tried that and it didn't work for me too much because I felt that I I then <clears throat> was trying to restrict my own receptiveness mm -hmm. um, and 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 my own sensitivity um, and artistry or whatever. So I found it quite difficult to put a, a barrier around me. I think it does work for some people, and I think it's 
I, I think, as we've said, there are dangers of opening one's heart out to maybe a, a somebody extreme on the extreme end of the narcissistic spectrum into the psychopathy system because unless one is very skilled they they, they will attack in into that into that area draw you in and do that as well um, and, and and so I think there are there are certain rituals one can do to protect oneself um, uh, I know Paul Levy he, he he, he comes out with a mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, which is basically the the, the Buddhist mantra, um, and I've used that, and I will focus on. Sometimes I will I will focus on that um, if somebody wants something. So rather than a, a barrier, that it may well be a chant that that they can use, um, and and some people in the EFT community will use. Uh, the the infinity sign. So if you've got a neighbour who who is aggressively um, stalking you or whatever, you know, and I think this is a big part of the TI issue, then there are certain um, signs and symbols you can use uh-huh. <laughs> that 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 some people found very helpful indeed. Um, uh, so so I think there are ways that we can do this without putting. Um, a protective element so much around us that we mm-hmm. lose our our sense of connection with the world. Um, but I think it is different from for different people. And I've said, you know, there's some people that will work for. I know my Buddhist mentor, um, Stephen Ong, who's a who's a who's a uh, Buddhist physician, talks about heart open and heart closed. And I think there is that that element of being able to um, close one's heart to attack. But that doesn't mean close one's heart to one's own self-compassion. Um, <clears throat> so I'm working through that. So I, I think I think it's I think what you're doing uh, in community is the way because I think that if there's a community of people who have been vulnerable, who understand it, they're cloaked basically with the warmth of the community who understand. And somehow that I think is going to be the best protection um, for them uh, as they then discover ways they can protect themselves. Um, uh, these, these entitled entities or beings are going to are so direct. They, they've been doing this for a long time and they, uh, I don't think we can win at their game, basically. We have to escape. We go into this other level of understanding and being and I think so many people are there where which is about connectivity and connective compassion and also that just a deeper understanding of the human condition um, I believe this is how we're going to counteract the pressures of artificial intelligence who's which is still based on this very primitive concept that you know our brain is the is, is the producer of consciousness you know um, I believe I wonder whether the actions that we're taking is actually highly important, almost like we're a cohort of, of, of individuals who are going to be challenging this so that it is not going to take over our humanity in such a negative way. Um, I certainly have huge concerns about artificial intelligence. And incidentally, <clears throat> you mentioned going down the rabbit hole. The more you, you persist with this, like we have with our case, it's, it's gone from actually different levels of consciousness we discover that the the the, the group that the, the international company our judge and our main uh, defendant and aggressor in our in our lives uh, they're concerned with as a group called action step which seems to be a mind mapping uh, software for lawyers and can you and i just looked at this and i thought internationally you know this could this possibly be used as for bad reasons, could you predict? Uh, and, and apparently they're selling it to lawyers, so saying, well, we'll mind map you so that you can run your business and you can go off fishing for a week and your practice will carry on as if you're not there. So then I'm thinking, well, I wonder if from the wrong hands whether this is, this is a great sure. idea. Uh, <laughs> and and who, is getting, who has got access to this information uh, if they're international lawyers? Uh, uh, or international trade dealers or arms dealers or whatever. What is going on here? So the deeper you go on, you go down the rabbit hole, the more red flags you, 
you find that's you right. think everything is really connected here yeah um, and I think that you're that's that's the what I can add to this you know I was thinking well the more you go down the more you think wow <laughs> what what am I involved in you know <laughs> right I, it's it's interesting to go down and to see uh, what their declared purposes are and and, yeah. uh, and and how they're getting there and whether their declared purposes are actually their purpose uh, so I'm mm. expl I'm exploring that uh, a lot, and uh, mm. but the the AI thing. I think that there's. See, I, I'm a consciousness study guy, so mm. I think there's a lot more to you than what's in your brain. I think your mm. brain is a component of consciousness, mm. and there's a lot more to you it's a, than is in your yeah, brain. It's a filter it's, in and a filter out, and we filter out a lot, and we filter in these realities, and it, and and yeah. And they can make they can make uh, the replica of the uh, again I'm going to use that metaphor the left brain yeah, because mm. the left brain seems to work on algorithms you know yes is, and and that's why they want to know your decision points because they can map that in an mm. algorithm I don't think the brain that's connected to your heart to the universe. Mm. I don't think it works on an algorithm. I think it works on no. direct knowing. I mean, how many times have you met someone and absolutely knew that you knew them in the past? And mm. it turns out that they play a big part in your life subsequently. Well, how did you know that? You didn't go yeah. through an algorithm. You just no. knew it. And that's a big <clears throat> component that I don't think the AI can map. Also, I, I, this, is my, this is an opinion. I think if anybody should be worried about the AI, it should be uh, Evelyn Rothschild mm, or, mm, mm. or the Pope. The people mm. who really have something to lose when AI takes over. So if, if yeah, there is a yeah. thing like AI, and if, it, yeah. and if indeed it will operate independently and make its own decisions, if I were Kissinger, Soros, Rothschild, or any of those guys, I'd be worried about the AI, but they don't seem to be concerned at all. So cool. I'm not sure if it's, I, I, I don't know, I'm just kind of working through that in my mind. No, it's, it's interesting what you're saying about the, the left brain as well. The, the psychopathic brain, which they've studied uh, under functional MRIs, shows that the connection between uh, the emotional brain, the, 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 hip, <laughs> you go, the hippocampus, the right. dog agrees, the hippocampus and the amygdala, uh, that, that's faulty. There's no connection, and therefore, um, there's no um, connection between emotions and empathy and the brain. Um, there's no uh, higher, <clears throat> higher checklist, if you like, checker on this as well. So, isn't that interesting? So that so the people present, preventing this will be probably focused very much on this brain in isolation. Sorry, left brain in isolation to 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 their to their heart, because if you look at the heart math. Uh, research. It's it's about harmony. It's about harmony, uh, harmonic waves, uh, uh, harmony of head and heart, uh, of which the psychopathic brains, who may well be involved in this AI stuff, uh, have no concept of that at all. They just see that this uh, frontal left part, which is their entitlement, their their, mm -hmm. their intellectual entitlement, if you like as being the highest center that possibly that could be. And we're going to base all our algorithms on this very, this very point, okay, which is the, uh, what happens with the, what we've learned about the, the psychopathic brain is very sadly that what happens if they, if, if, if uh, two people, an empathetic person, one normal empathetic person is shown a video of somebody squashing their fingers in the car door, they will react as if it's themselves. They will mm -hmm. act, react with pain. Um, uh, the, the psychopathic brain won't react this way. The amygdala won't light up unless it's in, it, they're told that it's their fingers. Okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> so if it's told of their fingers, they, they don't like that. But what will happen if they told it's somebody else's fingers? What shoots off of the basic anglia, shooting off dopamine, 
which is an addictive substance. In other words, there is an addiction to the suffering of that person. So they actually are addicted to the suffering of that person. This is the other reason why one shouldn't open one's heart easily to a psychopath, because ultimately they are not addicted to the money or the power that, as we would normally feel. They're, they're addicted to watching others suffer. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to be very careful about that. And that may be only 1%. They maybe those are the ones that those are the ones they feel are congenital. That doesn't mean that they haven't built up epigenetically over thousands of, of years. But they're the ones that will not shift. They are the serial killers, but they also will be the perpetrators in some of this what we'll be talking about as right. well. Um, so the brain's interesting, so the toxic element of that of the psychopathic brain system, consciousness if you like. Uh, is toxic to the to, to the majority, um, and and your work and my work is talking about the majority. It's the compassion for the ninety five percent, not the compassion for the one percent. Who who who? Uh, you, you don't have to hate them. You just have to ignore. You have to keep, be better than them and beat them. Uh, you don't have to. Do not try to counteract them with hate because they've got so much hate. They'll win every time. Yeah, they're perfectly designed for the job they seem to be doing. Um, yeah. I know we, I, I was listening to Oli Damagard and he was talking about how they make a serial killer. And mm -hmm. I know that, I know that some of the elites do this to their children. You know, they'll mm. give them a puppy and then they'll kill mm. the puppy or, you know, try mm. to try to break that uh, connection with compassion and to try mm. to produce uh, a psychopath or a parapsychopath based on, you know, some some torture that they've been through. Also, torture. Uh, some people say you can't return from torture. You know, once mm -hmm. you've been tortured, it's it, it changes your dream. I wanted to ask you a question about the uh, corpus callosum, the connection between Eliza. the left and yeah, the left and right brain. Well, mm -hmm. I have read that uh, in females. That's a lot more developed. There's a lot more uh, connection there. Mm. And I wonder if that has to do with uh, the fact that most people that are targeted, uh, some people estimate 70 to 75 percent, are females. Oh, well, wow. yeah, look, I didn't know that. I was just going to come to this because um, when you know, I run a practice for chronic illness uh, and same 70 percent of the people with chronic illness, the autoimmune conditions, uh, the rheumatoid arthritis where the body's attacking itself basically, are women. And this, uh, culturally we can see that women uh, with this much more balanced brain, which is focused on compassion and maternal love, have been gaslighted for thousands of years. Um, <coughs> Patch Adams, I don't know if you know Patch Adams, the, the great uh, uh, revolutionary doctor, um, has says this for sure, you know, that this has been the issue. We've had 7,000 years of war, male-dominated um, frontal left brain oppression. So, so the gaslighting and the, and the oppression of, of women has been massive um, and has uh, led to these, these illnesses um, that they, they're presenting now we're getting men presenting with those illnesses even more now as well um and they're usually the more enlightened ones so so ultimately this is because of this very uh, linear um perception of life and that basically the dumbing down of the maternal role um and so it is not surprising that the women are the ones who get it the women are the first ones to pick up on whenever a drug has an adverse effect on their bodies. Uh, when it came to statins, when you know the statins, the cholesterol drugs, uh, uh, the men, I instantly noticed when the men were taken, and they said they were tired and achy and um, all sorts of issues. That as soon as, and, and, and then the, the pharmaceutical companies targeted women as well. As soon as the women happened, they said, "Hey, you know, we're just feeling lousy with this. We don't have, We want a bar of this." Um, and so the women are always ahead of the game and it's because of their more integrated structure there. And I think now within 
certainly parts of the world anyway, they are given um, more of a, a, a say, more of a, an education. You'll find that they're the ones which will are being targeted. And certainly from my experience from that young lady who, who was zapped in, in, in uh, France, as far as I could see, and Catherine and the like, those are the ones that have got it together and it makes the most sense. They're pretty well terrified of the rationality. If they combine this with intense uh, rationality and wonderful research and diligent data, uh, that's who they'll get at. Um, and uh, I, I think in some ways I've, I've experienced that as well, because it's sort of um, uh, within within the medical profession generally, it's been a, 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 a modern materialistic, it's based on modern materialistic science where they've tried to cut out emotion or whatever, but at the same instance have produced masses of antidepressants without really understanding emotion. Um, so, so we, in some ways, uh, well, women are going to be attacked as well, but also, um, I suppose, feminist men as well, <laughs> who appreciate that we're going to be attacked as well. Right, right. I can see that. Mm. Uh, I saw. I see the uh, people that, at least the people that are on the joint investigation team. Uh, they're very strong, uh, left brain, rational. Mm. Uh, I mean, to. Uh, to the extent that they leave me in the dust sometimes. They're so, mm. you know, analytical and, and way to go. But they also have a complimentary, uh, compassionate, heart sense side. Yeah. And uh, if I were trying to do something with the world like the, uh, like our enemies are doing, like our oppressors are doing, uh, these are the kind of people I would target. Uh, first of all, mm. they're women, so they have that connection between them, and they have strength mm. on both sides. So. Yeah, I, I can see why they could be a threat uh, myself. And every time I see do, women are, 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 are have been much better than us in forming groups, you know. And uh, men's health, uh, well, we're, women are really helped by their own group of peers, you know. So I always encourage them, um, and they talk much more openly about their lives and their uh, and their emotions. So we're men, we're pretty hopeless with this stuff. Um, and uh, that creates our own um, denial, right. which goes into our heart issues and our blood pressures because we're not expressing them. Um, so now we're seeing with the, the, the women this, this much better, wonderful balance uh, between the two. You see, this accusation everybody has of you're a conspiracy theorist, this is the sort of like uh, the ultimate gaslighting. <laughs> what happens is that now what you do is you gather the data, you gather all the information, and then you look at why that information is not mainstream, why <clears throat> the uh, narrative is so uh, ignores all this. So you then look for the conspiracy. You actually look at why this hasn't been taken up by the mainstream. And uh, there's many levels of that. There may well be perpetrators that are suppressing this information, but then there's the sycophants who are who are doing it, uh, and, and and the willfully blind who are following the old school because they're being paid for it, and if they don't do, if they object, they'll lose their job and their their house. And then there's the vast majority of people who <laughs> care and basically are cognitively dif dissonant and and haven't a clue. <laughs> Um, so, so uh, the, the whole conspiracy thing falls down if you do your research because you do the data and you threaten, you threaten the people. We're, we're seeing that in the whole vaccination field thing as well at the moment with, with Vaxxed where, where there are a lot of top scientists that are looking at what is going into the vaccination. But the argument is being argued on, on guilt and, uh, and emotion um, from the pro vaxxers and the anti vaxxers well, it's the science, the proper science is going to be sorting this out. And then an advocate, okay, so the, then there's somebody who can speak, to can speak this. Um, and that's, that's throughout. So, so your group is doing exactly right. It's gathering the data uh, to such an extent that there's no answer to it. Or if there is an answer to it, it's so, <clears throat> what they reply with um, is inadequate. Um, 
and and then they'll resort, of course, because they always resort to ad hominem attacks, um, mm -hmm. and and to begin with, which is the whole conspiracy thing. You're a conspiracy theorist. You're a bit crazy. You've got the psych right. psychosis. <laughs> you're, you're obsessional and all that. Uh, uh, none of that will work once you've got the data, um, and and yet they'll still do it. They'll just yell greater, more and more, yeah. and zap people one more probably you know well well but it's the it's the facts that they'll that that will scare them right. um exactly and, and drive them away so you it's brilliant what you're doing brilliant well it, i hope it, it, we do have really good researchers on that team uh catherine and i were talking when we first met we did a lot of stuff on uh, i'm an organizational development psychologist and hmm. she's done system work so we've decided yeah. that uh, for conspiracy theories, we're going to use the term that they use inside businesses, and that is business mm. plans. Yeah. Business plans. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if Mars bars wants to take over 75% of the market, they're going to conspire. In other words, mm. they're going to make a business plan to get that market <clears throat> share. And uh, that's well, conspire a conspire just means to... breathe together. Uh, you conspire. It means we breathe together. Well, right. Why have we created this sort of um, attack on, you know, it's just this wonderful right. nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Let me bounce back so, to the men, men and yeah. women thing. I can remember, I guess this was about 10 years ago now, we were designing, it was, it was important for me as an executive coach to try to uh, get, uh, develop more women that can go into the high level positions. Now, uh, the organizations that I worked with were big international organizations and they would speak mm. uh, the desire to do that. And sometimes mm. they would, would certainly pick certain women to help them with that. But that, mm. but that wasn't a, uh, an underlying motivation. Uh, mm. But what we were doing, uh, myself and another consultant, we designed, since women are wired so much differently, to develop a woman executive requires a little bit of a different technique. And mm. it focused around uh, the men's natural competitiveness, which is how we traditionally develop executives. And uh, women have a natural cooperativeness. Mm. Mm. So if using that cooperativeness can help them, mm. and community, mm. can help them uh, rise above and get get to higher levels of functionality. Uh, that's what we wanted to do. Now, it didn't get very far off the ground, but I still think it I still think it would work because they are wired differently, and I think maybe that's why they're targeted. And maybe the the community aspect that you're stressing is exactly uh, what needs to be stressed going into. You know, as as we're fighting this, and then what? Because I I really have noticed since we've been in this business, and we've been doing it for about a year, uh, talking to targeted individuals, and and we've been doing the, the crime fighters for about six months. Uh, the community that's building up around us is phenomenal. You probably noticed that in your practice. Mm -hmm. uh, enough so. And, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm totally with you on this as well. And it is the the women. Basically, the heart focus. You see, the the maternal connection is through the heart and the and the breasts. And and you know, this is you wonder why um, there is so much breast cancer and that the conflicts are built up within our in our uh, culture uh, to the 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 nurturing of others. Um, so this this is and and that has been repressed and suppressed. Um, when when a woman does get get breast cancer, the and they come see me because they're often going through the chemo and everything. Mm -hmm. My job really is to introduce them to a community if they haven't got one. If there's conflict within their family, which there often is, then we then the, the, there's we 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 become part of the community. Okay, so the community right. the community is the answer. Um, and also, obviously, compassion and self-compassion. So that compassion for the woman isn't just going out to another soul, albeit their own child. It's going to be coming through back to, into them as well. Um, 
and and these these are these are huge issues as well. I mean, I, th I, I think the use of of course so many corporates use women as their front person to, but for the wrong <clears throat> the intent usually, isn't it, to sort of to to to, to soften the <laughs> the terrible message that they're putting out right. and to suck suck women and children in as well. Women are wise to this now, and I think what you're saying is absolutely right. Incidentally, um, Catherine's um, <clears throat> uh, work on, on the pyramid system and the psychopathic pyramid, um, I, I was intrigued by as well. Actually, I've done a video myself <laughs> trying to, once I, to explain it to others as well. Um, and it, how, how in this system, uh, the oil, the sludge rises to the top. You know, we talk about the cream rising to the top. <laughs> and this seems to be the, the dark sludge rises to the top. And it's so funny. And, and I applied it totally to my, my situation as well. And I see it happening all the time, the infiltration that occurs. And, and, it, and it's, no, it's desperately interesting. I love it. And it's also, you know, I'm a, a, a systems thinker. When you, where Eastern thought is systems and relationships that uh, we base on, on that. And that is why I think integrating that side of the East with the West is the way forward in this. Um, and and uh, yeah, that's, that's my focus in indi individual health. But now, but also for this community health, absolutely, yeah. I, I think integration is the way out. And how to achieve that, I don't know. Mm. But uh, uh, escaping into various uh, little cul-de-sacs cul or, uh, mm. or, or uh, how can I call them? They're like, they're like little traps of knowledge. Okay, this is where I mm. am. I believe this set of things and anything outside of this set of thing has got to be wrong because it's not within my set of beliefs. I think in order to mm. work through this and form communities um, effectively, we really have to take the lid off of that. And we have to uh, understand that there are a lot of people with a lot of different, different viewpoints and feelings, but we're all working through the same thing together. And, uh, that's that's a really powerful uh, powerful piece, <clears throat> and integrating the east with the west right now is I think uh, really different. Um, in eastern psychologies, in western psychologies, uh, the major focus I think is uh, making them functional in society because the 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 definition of someone who is uh, well used to be neurotic but they don't use it anymore. Um, is someone who is not functional in society. Mm. In Eastern societies, uh, psychology is, is used to uh, make someone, uh, how can I say, uh, view uh, the world and their life in a more comprehensive manner. In other words, mm. do away with cognitive dissonance. Have them get together mm. and look at the whole pattern and, and try to rise above. That's the whole focus of Eastern mm. Eastern teachings and Eastern philosophies is to try to grow. I call it consciousness, but you could call it a hundred other things. Um, so the integration of both now, I think, is a real is a real step in our climbing out of the dilemma that unfortunately we've been put in, and unfortunately uh, the people who are targeted are really feeling the brunt of this. Um, yeah, uh, well said, well said, yeah. Um, I think with the Eastern, <clears throat> when I do acupuncture, I explain that uh, the person, person being has presented me with a pattern uh, and I'm replying to the bottom, or the body with, with a, a constellation, a, a pattern, a connecting the dots. And that's what you do, you, you create here. And you're, you're opening up a dialogue with with a uh, on a level uh, or a non-linear level a pattern and you're responding in that way um and and this is escaping that uh it's, it's acknowledging the duality the yin and yang but it's actually um saying that's a part of life but it's not the overriding one as far as duality is concerned it's not just black and white you're not 
ill and well, you're actually, your body is communicating through symptoms, um, vital information back to me as well. It's a whole way of thinking, we're, we're a whole way of being, um, which is very mature um, and and should, can be integrated into what we're doing at Pinecone Utopia. It, it, to me, it's the whole, that's the focus of this, joining the dots. And then you sort of just allow it to happen. To be honest, there's a certain aspect of letting it be. There's also just one thing before, for, because you probably have got you, uh, things to do today, and I know I'm probably keeping well, you. Well, here's what um, I'm thinking. Don't forget what you're going to say. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this is a fantastic interview. You're incredible. You're like a godsend to us. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to continue these interviews. Uh, I'll talk to the joint investigation team, see if they'd like you to have, mm. come on with them, and then we can continue this. So anyway, mm. make your point. I hope you haven't forgotten it. I didn't mean to. I, I, was, go I was going to say, and I, I just says that as you heal, as, as I always ask the person to look out for a synchronicity. Um, and, and it's usually a synchronicity that is quite lighthearted, means nothing to anybody else, but to you and to the person, it is very, very, um, it touches you, okay? Uh, and it can be two butterflies or a bird in the tree, or, mm -hmm. uh, but, and it has meaning. And, um, and that is their guide that they're on the right track, okay? So this is coming from a connected, collective, universal consciousness that right. says, it says, yay, you know, that's good. I just want to tell you one thing. When <clears throat> I think uh, you replied uh, asking me on to this um, show, and it was wonderful, about three o'clock at night, and I woke up at three o'clock at night, and I, I have a hi-fi downstairs. I, no, I woke up and I heard this sort of drum and bass, and I was thinking, this is some some kid out in a car listening to drum and, drum and bass, you know, as a little. And then I got a little bit annoyed. I thought, oh, you know, shall I go out and let him know? And then, so I came down and I find my hi-fi downstairs blaring. It had started itself <laughs> at the very time. And then I looked in the morning. I said, when did you contact me? And it was exactly the same time. So therefore, you turned on the hi-fi. It was. Um, so thank you. So, so to me, that had a quite a bit of uh, synchronicity. So I don't know if that ever happens, because we know about the attacks and the delay and all the things they can do to broadcasts like this. But there's a little bit of a funny thing goes on as well. So there's a, there's a few angels maybe that uh, press the button when we're on the right track. So I thought you might like to know that. And it, it just turned it on and it, it, it had been turned off, you know. Blaring away. Um, That's great. To, to Ray Davis from the Kinks, good I love. Okay, um, so so there you go. So those are the little synchronicities. So then I thought, hmm, yep, yeah, uh, I better do this. Yes. That's great. Well, I'm so happy that we were able to turn on your <laughs> Wi-Fi. One of the things that I always say is, if if you really want to get in in sync with what's going on, throw out the word coincidence. Mm. And anytime something like this happens, do exactly what you did. What does this mean? <laughs> yes. How is this playing yeah. out for me? What should I what should I do next? Well, Dr. Robin Kelly, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Uh, we're going to try to get this up as soon as we can, and uh, we'll send you a copy. Um, and uh, it's it's just been real. We're going to stay in touch. I really consider you mm. a part of. Pinecone Utopia portal now. Uh, anything that you think we should be doing and we're not doing, uh, we'll follow up with subsequent interviews, I hope. And uh, um, I'm sure the, uh, the joint investigation team will be loving this interview and wanting to know you more and more. So thank you very much, Dr. Robin. Well, look, I'm, I'm deeply honored as well. And, and like everybody on the team, I, I'm, we're learning as well. Um, and and the, any feedback that I can get uh, is so valuable. I mean, this is how I'm learning. So um, thank you very much, both of you and and, uh, and the whole team. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.